So holiness is not that, okay, enter into the covenant and be holy. Mm -mm. The entry point, the beginning of the covenant, for you to even begin the covenant, is that you must be holy. You must be separated unto him exclusively before you can enter covenant with him. Gentiles don't have a covenant relationship with him outside of Jesus Christ. Because in the New Testament, it was by the salvific work of Jesus Christ that a door was now opened to the Gentiles. Are you still with me? So, men like Apostle Paul were now raised by the Lord and even Peter. Peter was the one that went to the house of Cornelius and when he appeared in the house of Cornelius, he was shocked beyond words that the same Holy Ghost that was given to the covenant people of Israel, God also gave to the Gentiles, to Cornelius. It was then that Peter knew that God no longer had made a distinction between the Gentile and the Jew. The branch that is called Gentiles had now been engrafted into the commonwealth of Israel. All of us that are sitting here, if not for the work of Jesus Christ, we will also be Gentiles. We are also Gentiles. But we have been engrafted into the commonwealth of Israel by the salvific work of Christ. But in this day, no uncircumcised. If you say, okay, I like your God, oh, then I want to do business with your God, oh, I want to worship your God the way you worship your God, then Israel will now say, the entry point. You will separate yourself from Gentile nations. And what is the basis of that separation? You'll be circumcised. And sure you know, bro, that circumcision is not, is not a sweet thing. It's painful. In Joshua chapter 5, the Bible says that as they were preparing to enter into the promised land, the Lord came and said, you can't enter like this. Circumcise all the males. The Bible says they brought out sharp knives. If you do it for a baby, it's a pain that the baby may not understand. But a grown man, a grown man, that circumcision is beyond words. It's painful. But whether you are, you are grown or you are small, if it is covenant you want, circumcision is non negotiate. God cannot find common ground with one who is unholy. Are you with me? Next verse. Verse 10. And the Levites who went far from me, now the first group of people that the Lord has dealt with the first group of people that the Lord has dealt with are the foreigners and the uncircumcised. Now, he moves into the arena of his chosen people. I want you to follow me closely. And in the arena of his chosen people, remember, they were all the nations. Out of all the nations, he chose Israel as his firstborn. Among all the nations. Out of Israel, who did he choose? The Levites. Now notice, you had Gentile nations, all nations, Israel, Levites. Three units. Three units. If I die further and you look at the sanctuary, you had outer court, inner court, holy of holies. Three units. If you look at the construction of man, you have spirit, soul, and body. So throughout, hmm, if you look carefully in God's dealings with man, throughout, the emphasis is that God wants to bring you into an exclusive covenant relationship with him. Where, like I told you last week, he is, he alone is your God. He's not sharing you 
with any other God. And you alone, you have made him exclusive owner of your vessel. You will not allow another spirit to operate your vessel. I've taught you before, and I like repeating myself because repetition is part of learning. Man, basically, what man is, is that he's a container. Man is a vessel to host God and to express God. That's what man is. Even when God chose Israel out of the Gentile nations and chose Israel, his whole idea was that Israel will express him to other nations. So other nations will now see how Israel related with their God and they will be willing to leave their God and come and submit to the God of Israel. That's the whole idea. So by your design, by your design, you are supposed to be giving expression to God. Your life is supposed to be dispensing the realities of a holy God. A holy God. So by the time you read the book of Exodus, hmm, remember when we started this teaching? Help me, Holy Ghost. So many things are happening in my spirit. Remember when we started this teaching, I tried to tell you that the five books of Moses have a story that they are telling. Hmm? Genesis tells you about God's original purpose, his creation of man, and man's departure from God. Exodus shows you God's plan to go and get man back to himself. That's when we read Exodus chapter 19, when the Bible says, Tell, Moses, told Moses to tell them, see how I bore you on eagle's wings, brought you out of Egypt to bring you where? To myself. Leviticus, on the other hand, is telling you the story that now that I have brought you to myself, there are protocols for how to deal with me. Are you with me? There are protocols for how to have a relationship with me. If you are going to relate with me as your God, I brought you to myself, oh. If you are going to relate with me as your God, I am holy. And you must keep to those protocols. So in Exodus chapter 25, the Lord comes to Moses and he says, tell the people to bring offerings. Have you read that scripture before? So that they can build me a sanctuary. Why do I need a sanctuary? So that I can dwell amongst them. Exodus 25, give me verse 8. And let them make me a sanctuary that I may do what? Dwell amongst them. So the sanctuary, hmm, the sanctuary was supposed to be the place of the Lord's presence. Are you still with me? So if you were looking for God, where do you go? Sanctuary. So the sanctuary was the location of the presence of God. So when God wanted to speak to Moses, the Bible says the cloud of glory will descend. And all the Israelites will know that Moses is now having intercourse with God. God used to come down to talk with Moses. He will not come down anywhere else. And you need to know how Israel was structured in their journey. You had the sanctuary, which is the temple. Then you had the 12 tribes camp around the sanctuary. So what you had, if you looked at Israel from outside, you will see outside the camp you will see inside the camp then you will see inside the sanctuary three units are you with me so anyone that did not belong to israel was where outside the camp outer court anyone that belonged to israel was where inside the camp inner court Anyone who wanted to find God's presence will now go where? Inside the sanctuary. 
But because God could not commit all of them to the rituals and the protocols of the engagement with the sanctuary, he now chose who? The Levites. These ones were the ones that now had the license to come into the sanctuary where the presence of God was what? Located. That sanctuary is a metaphor for your spirit man. Outer court is your flesh. Inner court is your soul. Holy of holies is your spirit. It's a metaphor for your spirit. In your spirit, you are supposed to host God. But if God is going to allow you be a licensed vessel that carries his presence, then you must meet the protocols of holiness. Did you not read? I think it's when they were stoning Philip. I think so. I think it's when they were stoning Philip, um, Stephen. That Stephen gave us a rundown of the history from Abraham to the very time that Jesus came. And Stephen, in that discourse, said to the people that were trying to stone him, he said, God does not dwell in temples made by what? Human hands. So when God was saying, build me a temple that I may dwell, it was a temporary arrangement to keep the plan of God going. Stay with me. Hmm. Because you see, I'm going to show you at the end, what I want to talk about tonight is the final separation. You see, brethren, the reason the church of Jesus Christ is joking with matters of the holiness of God is that it does not yet appear what it is that God is trying to establish. So we think, we think that we can push on the mixtures because right now, God has not come to exact judgment. So we think that we can successfully keep pushing the mixtures and it looks as if we are doing something right. But the time is coming, the clear distinction will be on the basis of his holiness. And at that time, if you have not followed the protocols, you will be on the, on the wrong end of God's judgment. God is not going to joke with this separation. Not now, not at the end of the age. Now, he's giving you the opportunity by the act of your will to determine that I will be holy. I want to do business with God, I will be holy. At the end of the age, it will no longer be up to you. God will bring out his measuring rod. And if you do not measure up, there will be no excuses. So to keep his plan going, his plan, I will show you in Revelation, his plan. In Revelation 21, we will see that there will be no need for a temple in the New Jerusalem. Ooh, that's the whole idea. Man and God are supposed to be naked and enjoying their deep relationship together because in both parties, there is no corruption. They are supposed to be enjoying themselves. That's what God is trying to achieve. But God could not do it with Israel because Jesus had not yet been crucified. So there was no basis for him to be able to be open with all of Israel. So he chose the Levites. He said, okay, let me put my present here, my presence here, temporarily. So if you want to do business with me, come into the sanctuary. Then me and you. But if you are going to come into the sanctuary, you must be holy. Any priest that went into that place unholy, he died. He died without God even getting angry. He will just die. Nadab and Abihu decided to bring strange fire. God did not say, I'm angry with you. And the minute the incense ascended, the system rejected it and killed them. Because that system is designed to host the holiness of God. You know what we have done? 
Because the veil has now been taken away. Do you know the fear? Fear the average Israelite had when they looked at that tabernacle. The reverence they had when they looked at that tabernacle. They knew that if I was not a priest and I went there, I would die. But because that old has been taken away, and now the temple is not one made with hands, God dwells within us. Are you with me? God dwells within us. In the Old Testament, you had the sanctuary, you had the priest, you had the sacrifice, you had the altar. In the New Testament, you that is a Christian, you are the priest. You that is a Christian, you are the tap, tap, temple, you are the sanctuary. You that is a Christian, you are the sacrifice. You that is a the Christian, you are the altar. Everything has been collapsed into one entity. Which is the believer. The believer. So the believer in his spirit is the holy of holies. That is where he's having intercourse with the spirit of God. So the Bible will say that the spirit beareth witness with our spirits. So there's a constant engagement between the spirit of God and your spirit. 